Okay, friends, as promised, uh, this is a follow-up to the Shack Tour, uh, where we're going to discuss the RF routing around the Shack. And if you were uh, watching, if you saw the, the last video on the, on the Shack Tour, which I highly recommend you take a look at, you'll see that I've got a lot of radios and uh, hand, also have a handful of antennas, which we'll talk about. And so I really wanted to get some sort of RF routing in place. So I'll, I'll show a little bit more about this. But uh, this is an antenna switching unit from a company called Ham Plus in Brazil. This is an older model, uh, 1202. This model has 12 uh, ports on one side and two ports here. Two ports. The idea originally uh, most commonly used for this would be to have two radios and up to 12 antennas uh, for contesting, uh, etc. Now, I don't have 12 antennas, but I do have a lot more than two radios. So I flipped it on, flipped it on its ears, and I now have the ability to hook up 12 different radios and uh, theoretically two antennas. But in this case, I'm only using one of these outputs. Uh, and that one output then goes over to another antenna switching unit from, also from Ham Plus. This model has been discontinued. This, it is an eight to one. So there's one common in the center, which you see here, and then eight antennas around the outside. And this is, I think, was meant to be mounted outside near the antenna or the near a tower, for example. Uh, you run one coax out of your shack and one uh, control cable, which in this case they use DV25 uh, connectors. Uh, out to your antenna location, and then you can switch to that one common coax to up to eight other antennas. So in my case, I have three, maybe four, maybe five types of antennas that I'll want to connect it to. Uh, and then I'll show this uh, again, and then right in the middle between it, so the output of the selected radio goes to a sensor for um, for my uh, station monitor, which I'll, I'll show a little bit more about, and then from the output of the station monitor to the antenna. Uh, one thing I sh uh, one thing I should mention is one of the antennas is is, is this dummy load. Uh, you can see I've got the coax going in. This is a fa a kilowatt dummy load. Let me just look at the exact details here. I think it's uh, yeah twelve hundred watt liquid uh, oil filled dummy load. So that is of course one of my antenna positions, and I'll show you that soon. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to bring up a little diagram I created for this, which should uh, really help. Uh, you understand the whole situation. So this is a diagram of the whole setup. And uh, here are the radios. I'll just go through them. The ARC-2, the BC-375, the TCS, the ART-13, uh, the Harris 1140, the Sunair 9000B, the Collins 30K4, the Central Electronics 100V, the Harris 2801, the TMC PAL 500 system, uh, one thing I didn't show in my to Shack tour was I've got this NN uh, uh, 100 SDR, which I'm very eager to play with at some point, something a little more modern. And then uh, something for the bench here, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a moment, what that is. So uh, this, uh, the 1202 selects one of these radios, which then goes into the station monitor, which shows three things. Uh, the waveform, so you can look at your uh, output waveform, AM or sideband, um, etc. in the time domain, and it also shows you the power output forward and reflected, as well as the SWR, uh, and it's got all kinds of neat features. That then goes into the actual antenna selector, so, so here we really consider this the radio selector, and here is the antenna selector, one of eight, of which I only have a handful. So I've got an off-center fed dipole, which covers uh, these bands uh, discreetly. I've got one end fed uh, from the house out to a tree that is d designated specifically for, fifth, uh, for 60 meters. I have a vertical, um, which I'll try to get some pictures of some, at some other time. Uh, it is a 43-foot vertical with about 11 radials, and it's got a, a coupler at the base of it, which is a big honking Roden Schwartz military uh, coupler, and this essentially will tune up anything. I can tune up uh, any band at all. 
Uh, and then uh, finally, I have a loop, a receiving loop antenna, which is, I think it's a Wellington or Wellbrook, I think is the name of it, which is, it's got a little, uh, in the shack, it's got a little uh, FET, uh, uh, maybe it's a, a gallium arsenide uh, FET uh, receiving loop. But this is receiving only. Uh, if you transmit into it, you'll bust it. You will, you will smoke it. One of the very neat things about the HAM Plus antenna switching uh, system is its ability to designate certain antennas as receive only, which in this case for the receiving loop is, is certainly the case. You don't want to transmit into it. And the way that works is you, using the switches, using these buttons on the front panel, you can designate um, certain uh, antennas as receive only and then you if you also put the uh, the key down the push to talk signal into it there's a uh, there's an RCA jack on the back then whenever the uh, transmit any transmitter is transmitting it will see that uh, push to talk signal come in and it will not it will block uh, any transmission from going out of uh, a receiving only antenna such as my loop uh, but what it will do is you can tell it which antenna it would be the output antenna. So, for example, I could just make it a dummy load. Uh, and if I accidentally try to key into my receiving loop, uh, it will just dump into a dummy load. Or you can designate it, a, 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 create a specific setup so that you can have a, a work split, meaning one antenna for receive and one antenna for transmit. And uh, so you can do that. For example, if I'm working DX, I might want to have the loop used for receive and the vertical uh, let's say on on 20 meters use the vertical for transmitting so it's a really it's a really cool little system I can't wait to get that all worked out so uh, but this is for receiving only and it's uh, directional and I showed earlier in the in the shack tour that I have this loop on a rotator uh, on one side of the house um, and then finally as I mentioned just prior we've got the dummy load is one of my selections uh, as well so, uh, and then you've seen in the video, I've got uh, a 12 spot, a 12 position selector. This is remote. It uses uh, a, a 25, I think it's, maybe it's a 15 pin, uh, 15 conductor cable with DB25s on either end. So, uh, and then of course, this is for selecting the radio. And then this one is for selecting the antenna. The neat thing about these is they light up and you can pop off the individual covers uh, and you can, with your with your laser printer or something, you can print what a, a print you know, some some human readable <laughs> explanation of what each button is. And I'll try to. I, you've seen that, in, I'm sure, sure, in some of my videos too. Um, so that is the basics of all of it. It's very convenient. It's nice to have the station monitor right in the middle of it because you just never. All you have to do is pick the radio, pick the antenna. And it's it nothing else has to has to happen. It will show you uh, in real time what you're uh, what you're uh, putting out. The video camera I'm using, which is my cell phone, really doesn't do a good job of showing the uh, printed label when the um, button is selected and illuminated. So I just wanted to add this little uh, this little picture in here showing you that it is quite readable and that uh, my my cell phone camera is just. Uh, overblowing the the brightness of the of the switch uh, but you really can see it when it's illuminated just fine one quick thing I wanted to come back to was I mentioned you saw in the diagram that I've got this uh, one of my radio selections is the bench and I just wanted to show you what that all means so uh, what I've done is as you saw in my earlier video this is my repair section right my repair bench and uh, it's very convenient when you're working on something, a uh, radio, to have access to an antenna or a dummy load. So what I've done here is I've routed, this is, this is um, uh, an end connector, and it routes all the way back to the, or all the way back to the, the, ra the radio switcher, and just makes it very convenient, very easy uh, for me to connect a radio receiver or something to do some testing. And again, this allows me to, uh, from there, uh, using the switch, um, select the bench, uh, and then also select if I want a particular antenna or even, or even the dummy load. So it's very convenient to have that at the workbench.
So this is the, uh, I'll tell you what, let's go off. This is off-center fed dipole and the vertical, which I've tuned up. Uh, both are 8 to eight to 10, 80 to 10, rather. And this lets me switch between them. I could also switch between radios. So uh, here you see I've got the 1148, uh, the Harris. And I can also switch to a, uh, a Sunair RT9000, which I've got sitting here. So uh, yeah, it makes it makes selecting the radio and the antenna very easy. All right, well, let's take a look at it. Let's do a little antenna comparison. So here's 60 meter end fed. Here's my vertical that's been tuned to 60 meters, and we'll try between the two. Let's try 60 meters end fed. End fed. Now, vertical. End fed. Vertical. Now, Ken is very close to me. He's probably ground wave, um, well, close to it. He's maybe an hour north of me. Let's try it again. Vertical. Lower signal. And fed. Try the j vertical. So, for Jeff in very far Vermont, vertical seems to be very similar to the end fed. Of course, the vertical is a very long, very low angle of radiation. Ken again, local. Forty-seven is sounding terrific, and I just realized I skipped right over another Jeff on a PRC forty-seven. So let's try and fix that. W1QL, Jeff, glad you could join us. Please go ahead. Big difference. And Fed seems to win most cases. W1QL. New England. Also uh, in New Hampshire. Sixty meter end fed. Let's try the vertical. Lower. Yeah. So again, end fed wins there. Now we could do a test between radios. So the, we're, we're. I don't know if you can see it. The the Harris setup, which is here, and I'll switch it to, let's get the panel light here, uh, where's the panel light, and here's the Sun Air, so 
Let's switch. Low signal. Let's try here again. Let's go back to the Harris. Wow, Harris sounds how sounds better. Oh no, it's come back up. Now let's again switch the vertical. Very similar to Maryland. I think the infed's still a little better. Okay, very good. K3, AKH, we look forward to catching up with you in round two, Ray. But uh, you're sounding very good down there. I have a feeling that a lot of people up this way can hear you, no problem. So let's take it over to someone who I'm not familiar with myself. N1 WDS, if I have this right, it's November 1 Whiskey Delta Sierra. His name is Doug in Vermont. Please go ahead. All right, let's see if the vertical's any better here. Vertical seems better in this case. And fed. Oh, maybe not. Pennsylvania. And fed definitely better. Vertical, nothing. And fed signal. Sounds great. Let's try vertical. Nothing. And fed works well. There's Glenn right there.